All right, it's your boy Chili here, the repenter. I am here to repent for accidentally charging the Patreon when I didn't make videos. And so I gotta make videos, here we are. All right, so this one, uh, what I wanna do is I wanna explore some stuff about setting up solutions and projects, kind of a continuation of the stuff I did in the game engine infrastructure series. And just looking at a couple more topics in depth. Okay, now I wanna consume some third party libraries, which as we know is a, always a joy in C++, but, we have tools, we have technology, we have VC package. I mean, on their GitHub page, they have a link to getting started. And basically you clone the repo, and then in there you run a command, which is called bootstrap. So that'll install a standalone VC package, but newer versions of Visual Studio will also install VC packages together with Visual Studio. So you got it in there already. The only thing you gotta do is then for the VC package that was installed with your Visual Studio, you gotta find it and run VC package integrate install. And that will integrate it with your Visual Studio, link everything up, but uh, yeah. So we're starting with that all set up and we wanna use VC package. Now there's two, just like there's two ways of installing it, there are also two ways of using it independent of how you installed it. Um, you can basically pull in packages, like, I don't know, like boost, or ass imp or whatever and then you make them globally available on your system so they're placed in a central location and any project that you have building on this system will be able to link to those and be able to find the headers so that's one way of doing it uh, the other way which is the better way which you create um, a vc package.json file which we will be doing and that's called a manifest and then you put in there what third party dependencies you have and then it will automatically pick them up and install them when it builds your project. And that's great because if you put your project on GitHub, someone else pulls it, they don't have to try to figure out what things they need to put in VC package to get it to build. They just build and it'll automatically install whatever it needs. Sweet. So let's create a new file just in here and we'll call this one vcpkg.json. I'm just gonna make one that is central for my entire solution. Uh, I like to have it visible in my solution, so let me try to add an existing item to my solution, VC package.json. All right, that worked. So a minimal VC package would just have the name and the version of your thing. Now, one of the cool things is it automatically detects you've got a VC package.json and it uses a schema that it finds in here. And I think that can give you, yeah, it gives you auto completion IntelliSense on what things you can add to your VC package. Cool beans, but for right now, we just want to set it up so that it will pick this up and we'll build with it because it doesn't do that by default. The default setting for any project is to yes, use VC package, but do not use the manifest. So we want it to use the manifest. We want it to use it, but I would not prefer to change it in every stinking project, I would like to have a central place to change it in the property manager properties. Now there's a problem with that. For the property sheets, there is no goddamn place to set the VC package settings in the property sheet editor here. So I guess that means that we can't do it. Ha ha, no, we can do it. We just have to hack the system. So here is a property file I just added to the directory here I copied from a different project. Uh, VC package.props. Let's just pull that into a text editor. And yeah, VC package use static, true. VC package win x64 windows static is the host triplet. Manifest files, use manifest, manifest install. So here's a property sheet that has VC package stuff in it. It's not exposed through the editor of property sheets because Microsoft never bothered to put that in there, which is dumb because they have it, they already have the UI stuff for it, obviously, because you can edit it in the project settings, but not in the property sheets. But if you find the settings in the project and then you put them in a separate file, then you have a property sheet. Now, I don't want to use static linking for this one, and I don't, so then I don't want the triplet to be this. So we can remove this part, but, so it's not nice in that you have to figure out what these keys are. And you can do that by editing the project and then inspecting the diff. Yeah, inherit defaults, you stinker. 
Oh yeah. This happens sometimes. You just close it and open it and it's done. Okay. So now what we want to do is add that property sheet. This one. VC package. You could also put it in, you could copy those those properties into your common and that, that would probably be good, but I'll just keep it separate here. Once you set up the one you like, you can just copy it again between different programs. And you could also put this, I would probably recommend putting this in your templates too. So now it says, let me see here. If we go to Stati, properties, advanced, VC package. We are using VC package manifest. Lovely. Lovely. We have activated manifestation. Now, let's just get this set up so that we can build it. So we'll declare a function here. I'll put that in here. Mm -hmm. Then in Jennifer Connolly, we are going to add a reference to Stati. And let's return the result of calling F. Okay, so now if we build, it says installing VC package dependencies, of which there were none. Uh, fatal error. Unexpected end of file we're looking for pre-compiled header. Stati.cpp. Okay. Okay, you son of a bitch. Okay, so for release, I made it so that it inherits from the property sheet, but for debug, I, de I did not do that. So that was dumb and bad. Uh, so that's what you'd have to do before you exported the template, obviously. A little bit of a little bit of an L there, but we have built and we know from the message that we received earlier that VC package is hooked up. All right, let's give it a little different sauce. We should probably set Jennifer Connolly as the startup project. And we get 69. Okay, so everything's working here. VC package is hooked up. Let's make it do something for us. So we add a thing in here, dependencies. And let us add something called CLI 11. And so you can see it's finding the package CLI 11. It installed it and it is done. We now have CLI 11 available. So what can we do with CLI 11? Well, CLI 11 is a kick-ass command line parser. Let's, let's just do a little test of it. So the way it works is simple. You create this app object and then you add options to it. And then you run it on your argc and your argv and it is going to pull out, it's gonna figure out what switches belong to what option. It's gonna link it up to the data that you bound to the option. And it's gonna verify that it it you know fits the requirements that there's nothing wrong with it and you have a good time so let's uh, let's try this out here uh, we should probably include something so let's go include cli cli.hpp which probably gives us all the stuff if i had to guess so you can give your app a description and you give your app a name And cool. Now, we need options. What I actually like to do is I like to lump my options together in a struct. So we'll call this one struct options. Okay, option foo, an int option bar, a float option biddy, and let's do bool flag one, bool flag two. We'll give these options all some default values here. So now we want to bind them to switches on the command line. We go app.option, we go app.add option. The name is going to be foo. It is going to be bound to, well, we need to create a, let's go opts to create an actual struct here. Opts.foo. A fooing string option. I'm going to do this sort of thing for the other options. Now for the two flags, we will go add flag. Let's go flag one. We can give it a short name too that you can combine. So the F, I'll show you that in a second. And then we give it the, the, the bool to bind to. We'll do the same for the other one. So now we got two flags, they each got a different 
uh, short switch option in there. And that's all of our options set up on the command line. We just need to do this, invoke this macro that expands to the parsing code. Give it to argc, give it to argv, give it to app. It would help if my argc and argv were named properly. Yeah, this seems to be good. It just expands to a try catch. So it tries to parse and if something was, if there's an error, it's gonna return the exit code. Mm, let's include format here and let's print out the results. So steed see out format. All right, so here we are. We define our app, our structure that's gonna hold all the options. We bind them all and register them with their names and their descriptions. We can parse the command line and then we can output the results. So if we run this, we see that the results are just all the defaults that I set in the structure here because I didn't, I didn't pass anything to the command line. So normally what you'd have to do is you'd go into the project properties here, you'd go into debugging and you can put command arguments into here. But I don't like doing that. I don't like doing that every single time. It's annoying. So I install a extension that allows me to specify command line arguments here. I have a big list of them. I can turn them on and off while still keeping them available. And that's very useful for me, like just in everyday development. But let me see here. Yeah, it's smart command line arguments for 2022. Uh, if you are interested in installing that, but let's add a couple of command line options in here. Let's do uh, foo. And uh, let's add another one in here. Let's add F for flag one. And now if we run, the following argument was not expected F. So here we see the validation coming into play. Uh, if someone supplies faulty parameters to your program, then it's now going to give diagnostics and it's not going to try to run with the bad input. And it says another thing here, run with help for more information. So what if we were to, I mean, the problem is if you're using a short flag, you just got to use a single dash, not a double dash. Um, but let's turn these two off and let's add another one in here. Help. And let's run with help and see what that gives us. So now it gives you description of the program, the usage, which is name of the program, and then with the exe name and then options, and here you have all the options. So foo, and it takes in some text, and here's a description of it. So you got a lot of good stuff. It automatically generates diagnostics for you, and, and when it automatically validates input, generates diagnostics, it automatically generates a help page and a help command. So a lot of cool stuff with CLI 11. Let me turn on the F thing in. Yeah, if you have help, it's going to ignore all the other options. So you can just turn this option off, but leave it available in the list for the future. And here we see flag two is flag one is true because I specified the F. And here with short flags, you can specify two together just by concatenating them FW. And now I should get true and true and I do. So yeah, cool stuff with the CLI 11. And I want to kind of go deeper into it in the next video. But that is one of the reasons why I wanted to make this video, because I wanted to show you some options for ergonomically setting up your solutions and projects. I wanted to show you how to bid the basic usage of uh, VC package manifests, how to pull in third party dependencies. And I wanted to get us set up with CLI because I want to explore it more in the next video. Well, until then, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please click the like button. It helps a lot. And I will see you again with some more C++ repentance.